When we talk about cancel culture, we're really talking about consequences. Some of your favorite stars have probably been canceled. Actor Scarlett Johansson came under fire for taking roles outside of her race and gender identity. Kevin Hart was canceled after his past homophobic social media posts resurfaced. And author J.K. Rowling had her transphobic views challenged and discredited in mass online. But if these public-facing figures still have their fans, money, and fame, were they ever really canceled? If not, then what is the point of cancel culture? The consequences that someone like J.K. Rowling, for instance, has experienced is that a lot of people are upset with her, are calling her transphobic, are saying that she's a turf. She is posting outright lies about trans people. She's posting fake science. She is citing um, so-called scientific articles, which are, you know, at best disputed. At best. But to say that that has had any real life implications on what really matters to her, which is her coins, you know, her money, her, her books, her movies, her legacy, that hasn't really changed. The boogeyman cancel culture, it's that it has been, it's been treated in recent years as well. If you cancel that, so, you know, your, your, career, your, your career is just sort of ruined, your career is, is over. And most people who complain about cancel culture have not experienced anything close to that. What they're really afraid is having their power challenged. Critics may boycott the celebrities' content, demand that they right their wrongs, or simply argue online about how and why the celebrity is problematic. When someone, when someone brings up cancel culture, it's the new name for political correctness, really. It's just like a quick, easy way to dismiss um, a reaction. Harper's Magazine published an open letter signed by more than a hundred well-known figures that not so subtly denounced cancel culture, claiming that it was an attack on free speech. This contingent of elite intellectuals were sort of creating a, a crisis that didn't exist. Having an uncomfortable conversation is not impeding or eroding someone's constitutional rights to free speech. You can say what you want to say, but you're going to be called out for it. It's just a critique. It's being open to being questioned. There can be a lot of compassion in challenging someone and calling someone out in order to create a more equitable world and a more equitable uh, discourse. We're all going to have to feel a little discomfort and say the wrong things. No one has perfect politics. No one is not problematic. Okay, like, let's accept that and move on from there. We are talking about creating redemption. Redemption is not cancelled. Redemption is being built here. That accountability is supposed to set you free. Let's talk about what, we, what we're really talking about, which is like, what should consequences look like? What should accountability look like? What should, what should justice look like? This is a part of being a human in 2020.